All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, this is this is not a series, but um, this is going to be a fun little episode. Um, I'm going to be doing some Minecraft stuff. So let me just show you what we're going to do. So we're going to have this Minecraft window, and basically all we can do is now add tiles and remove them. So I can add by left clicking and remove them by right clicking, which is awesome. Um, so we're going to go through a the Godot four tile set. Um, it's completely different than than normal, but it's quite cool. So we can kind of add a bunch of tiles, which is really awesome. Um, and there's different layers as well. So that'll that'll be fun to play around with. So let's go right into that. Um, the first thing we're going to do is create a new project. Um, so there's quite a few different things. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but let's, oh, sorry. Um, let's browse. I'm going to put this on my desktop and select this folder. I'm going to name this MC YouTube. Um, and I'm going to create folder and I'm going to do Vulkan Mobile. Um, this is not 3D. The stuff that we're doing is not 3D. It's going to be all done in 2D. It looks like 2D to 0.5D, but this is actually still 2D. Um, so we're not going to be working in 3D yet. I might actually do something 3D soon, but for now, uh, Vulkan Mobile is, is going to work for us. Um, and then for the version control, we can just do none unless you're going to be uploading to Git. Um, and that is it. So let's create an edit. Um, there are a few things to note. I'll, I'll kind of add them as I go along. So let's create a 2D scene first, and we'll name this world. I'm going to save it, save it here, and we're just going to play so we can select it. And that's it. Let's go to project settings. Um, project settings has changed quite a bit. There are a lot of different things. One thing to note is that there is now an advanced setting. So if you want the old, old settings, this is the advanced setting. So we're going to click advanced setting. We're going to change this to 500 and then 300. This is going to be 1000 and this is going to be 600. Uh, we're going to scroll down. We're going to keep the mode. We're going to keep like that. And let me just double check my reference that there's nothing else. It's weird that it actually popped up here on the side. Um, and we'll pop this in and that's it. Yeah, so let's close that. So our project settings are done. Um, so there's one thing to note, the icon, you, we used to be able to go to the icon, drag it in, and then change the import settings, but if you, and turn off filter. So if you remember, filter was what made it blurry. However, you might've noticed it's, it's blurry, right? It's not pixelated. And in our import, there's nothing like that that allows us to make it unblurry. However, it's in our, it's now in our texture. So in our texture, we go to filter, we, go, we can click nearest, and that'll allow us to see the pixels. Um, so this, un unfortunately, it's like this in everything. So if anytime you want something that's pixelated or unpixelated, that's how you'll do it. So um, let me import our picture or our blocks. I'm going to put this in the description down below. So this is going to be our blocks chain. Uh, you can use whatever you want, but I've just imported it and it allows us to put it all in, into one. So let's make a tile set. Let's, let's pop in, let's jump right into it. So tile map, we're going to create a tile map as a separate node. We're going to save it and we'll say blocks and we'll save it there. Um, and now what we'll do is we're going to save our, set our cell quadrant size to 32. We're going to create a new tile set and let me just double check something. Um, yeah, we'll look at layers in in later. Um, and then another thing we'll do is, as you remember, the filter is going to be in every node, so we're going to have to change that. So we go to filter and nearest. Um, I'm, I think you might be able to do, I haven't looked into it, but I'm sure there's a way probably that you can set the default to nearest for a project. I'll look into it later and maybe I'll update. I'll have another video for that. Um, so, you know, subscribe if you haven't already to keep up. Um, layers we'll look at later, but for now we can actually just name this, um, layer one. No, actually, you know what? Let's add it. Let's add two layers. No, I lied. Let's add three. Layer three. Or right, what we'll do is we'll name them zero, one, two, zero, one, two. And there's a reason why we're doing this. I'll, I'll get into it in a second. And now for the layers, because we're working with a Minecraft oriented game, um, the Z index is what we're going to be working with. So the Z index here is going to be negative one. And this is going to be negative two. 
Let me double check I didn't do anything with the Y sort. Um, and yes, we are going to enable the Y sort. I don't think it actually matters, ironically enough, um, but in our case, we'll just turn it on anyways, it can't hurt. Um, now let's go to the tile set and we're going to look at our new tile set. So we have tile set and tile map. So tile map is where we can actually draw. Tile set is where we're going to add our tile. So what we can do is just drop it in and it will actually automatically modify this for us. However, as you can see, these uh, cells are not the proper size. So we can do that on the left here, 32. Oh, sorry, we have to do this here first. So we have to go to tile size. And the dough is a bit slow. I think it froze on me. Yeah, I think it froze on me. So just wait a second. There we go. 32, 32, enter. And then we're gonna change this to 32. There we go. So now all our cells are 32 by 32. I think one thing that's interesting and weird is when you scroll in and out, you no longer have to hold control to zoom in and out. But if you hold control, it'll zoom up and down, which is pretty interesting. I'm not sure if they'll keep that, but eh. Um, all right, next thing we're going to do. So there's a few things. One, as you might be able to tell, our, our cells are isometric. They're not square. So we can do that by changing it in the tile shape. We can go to here and set isometric. However, if I zoom in here, you can see that it's not, it doesn't really fit properly. So what we can do, ooh, interesting. Um, so what we, what I did is I, I played around with the tile size. Um, the way I did this is by just dragging it up and down kind of. Um, first, I actually put some cells down. So let's put some cells down. Let's go to tile map, select our tile that we wanna add, and let's click four down. As you can see, they're not, next to each other, they're kind of far apart, which we don't want, right? So to play around with this and make them closer, right? Or appear closer, we're going to go to tile size and just drag it up and down. And I already played around with this and the numbers I decided to use are 13 and 25. So that way it looks relatively close. You can play around with it yourself and choose whatever you want. Maybe you want it like that, I, I don't know, it's up to you. But I'm gonna do 25 and yeah, 13, I think I like those two numbers. Um, and then we're going to, that is it. Now what we can do is go into our tile map, tile map over here, Let's pull this down and just draw. All right, so we have, uh, um, I might, so because they've removed Y sort, so if you actually try to go here, add and search up Y sort, it is no longer there. The reason being because Y sort is now in every node, Y sort is now, implemented into each node, meaning the nodes will kind of pop in front of each other. So you'll have to sort it yourself, essentially. Um, we'll get into this later on with players using Godot 4, but for the tile set, it should work properly as long as you have the layers and the Y sort um, activated, which we did earlier. So let's draw a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom out and draw. Let's actually not draw, let's save this, go to our world. You know, Oh, it crashed. That is crazy. So Godot 4 is still in beta, so <laughs> that might happen. Um, hopefully it's saved though. So let's go to our world. Let's pop this guy in and let's set the transform to zero, zero. And then let's, let's draw. So let's go to our tile map and let's select, ah, so can, ah. I'll be honest, I don't like the zooming. So zoom out is just straight up zooming and then Zoom in, let's draw here. And we'll just draw a straight square. Awesome. And now you might be asking, oh, how do we draw under it? Or how do we make dirt appear under it? So first of all, let's select our dirt and then we can go to layer one and just draw under it. Awesome. So now it looks like there's dirt under, under it, right? So that we can actually draw all the way around. Let's draw a second layer kind of. And then we're going to go to layer three and draw under that as well. To fill out as much dirt as we want. I think there is a fill tool. Yeah, there is. You can do like that. But um, I'm just going to. Whoops. That is so strange. What is happening? Okay, there we go. Sorry. Um, 
Okay, add those two, add one more there, and I can't add one there because the Y sort is weird. Um, and now what we can do is I just click out, and now we have a block. Um, let's actually add one more layer here, and then one more layer here. Now it looks like we have a, a step, which is awesome. Um, so now you might be asking, well, if I play, I can't click anything, right? Um, first of all, let's add a camera to zoom in a little bit. So camera, 3D. We'll zoom in. I did three and three, I think. Um, we'll do current, not rotating, and limit zero, zero. Awesome. Uh, and now if I play, it should pop up a little zoom down. So now if I click, nothing happens, right? I can't click on the screen. So the first thing we have to do is go to project settings, input map, we go to new action, and let's add a left click, and then let's add a right click. So in our left click, we're just going to left click, and right click is right click. So it, they've changed the format for this a bit, but it's pretty much the same, really. All right, so now in our tile app, we're going to add a script to it. Um, let's go back to our blocks here. And this is going to be the fun part. So, ooh, I added it there, but not there. Okay, let me let me delete. No, I'm not going to delete that for now. Okay, let me make sure if I click here, it'll change this one. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I think what's interesting is they've actually changed it so that we have the ready and process function uncommented, which is pretty neat. Um, so in the ready function, I don't think we have to actually do anything. So we're going to delete that. But in our process function, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking for input. So say input is action just uh, pressed. And we'll have left click. And then we'll pass for now. And then we'll also just let's copy paste this and say clicked. Awesome. Um, so now what we want to do is create um, two things. So we have a tile and a cell, or set cell. So there's going to be two lines in this code. So this code is very simple, but we're going to have two things happening. So the first one is we're going to create a tile that we're going to check where are we actually clicking. So before, I think it used to be world to map, or map to world, or something like that. Um, but they've changed it to be local to map. And this will just allow us to change something in from local into, a, into our map, or right, our tile map. So what we're going to do is get our global I'm just going to copy paste it. This is a very long function. Get global mouse position. And I can't type, I'm illiterate. So get global mouse position. We're going to get our global mouse position and convert that position, our vector, into our tile map, right? And this is actually important. This won't work unless you do that. Um, what is happening here? Oh, there we go. Um, and then this isn't, this is still, it used to be cell, set cell uh, V. But now it's just set cell. Um, and so set cell, OK, here's here's what I want you to do. I want you to try, if you go into set, no, not set cell, sorry, go into tile map. So click tile map. Um, where was it? I used it earlier. It's in script. Yes, no, right click tile map, and then open documentation. And then well, you, you, can, you can read it through here, or you can open online docs. And then here we go. I got my online docs. Let me do open that. Um, and you can kind of read through all the new stuff. Oh, it's not here. Um, let me actually open it. I'm pretty sure I had it open on the side. Tell map. Here we go. So this is the new one. So we can see erase cell. We can look up set cell. And you can look at all the stuff that it needs. And this is what I did earlier before the tutorial. So I'll, I'll let you do this on your own. And I would suggest you look at the things that go into the set cell. But I will, I will tell you and teach you anyways. So set cell can take two or five arguments. So two of the arguments are very important. The first one is the layer. So we're going to edit the z layer zero, right? the first layer, technically. And then that's the layer. So what are we going to add to that layer? Well, we want to add, or not add, what are we going to add, but um, which tile are, which position are we adding it in, which is the tile position, right? which we got. So it's the global mouse position. And I believe this should work. Let's try it. All right, so it's removing. Why? It's not actually removing, but it's setting the cell to nothing, right? So this is this no longer really works. This used to work before, but now it no longer works because it needs three more arguments. Those three arguments are going to be, you can actually read it here. This is pretty neat. So it says source ID, 
Atlas Chords and Alternative Tile. So this might seem really complicated and, and like, oh, I'm so confused. What am I doing? I don't, I don't understand it. But if you actually go into Tile Map, Tile Map down the bottom, what you can do is hover a cell and it gives you all three of those things. Source, Atlas Coordinates, and Alternative. So if you hover on another one, it'll say the same thing. And so the reason, so the source, oh, I can explain it. So the source is the tile. So if you have several tiles, so right now we only have one, we only have this guy, right? There was another one, so I could even add this guy. Oh, I have to do that in tile set. I could add this guy and it would say source ID one, right? Make sure. Go back to tile map and this is ID one, right? So if I zoom out and find it, there it is. If I hover it, it'll say source one. Um, and it'll give me coordinates because this is not one cell, this is a bunch of cells as the cell quadrants. We, we won't edit it. We don't care about the cell. But that's what the source ID is, right? And then there's the coordinates. Because this is a tile set, it's giving us specific coordinates, which hopefully is self-explanatory. And then the alternate alternative tile is what tile are we going to give if there is no, like, what's the default tile? Like, if I, if I accidentally give, like, 18 and 0, which doesn't exist, what am I going to use instead? Which is going to be this one, which is nothing. There's nothing there, which is why it looks like it, I was erasing it. However, I wasn't erasing it. It's just setting it to nothing, right? So what we can do is we're going to pass through those things. So the ID, the vector, vector, I can't spell. I think one thing I don't like about um, you know, two or four is that it's not auto-completing. Because <laughs> I, can't, I can't type. Let me just copy paste this. Vector two, um, and we'll do zero, uh, zero. And then the last one, which is going to be the alternative, which is just zero. Um, we don't have any any other alternative ones, so that's the only one that exists. So now, if I play, I can now set the tiles to that. So now I can draw like that. Awesome. Um, and last thing we'll do is we'll just copy this and paste it. We're going to take out all three of those arguments because this is the actual tile that we're adding, and we no longer need to set what we're do what we're because what we're doing is erasing the cell, right? And we don't really care about what cell we're adding because there's no cell. Um, we're also going to have to let's actually put this outside. And then, yeah. Um, so yeah, now we're erasing the tile at layer zero at position zero, right? So now if I, if I add by left clicking, then I right click, I can now remove. And yeah, so that's it. So. You can play around with this. You can add cell to like cell layer one. Um, so if you play, now I'm adding to layer one, right? Not the first layer. So you can play around with this. You can have a scroll wheel that selects a certain number. Um, I might actually continue this series. We'll see. Um, we'll see how well it does, I suppose. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool. I, I just did this. It took me a while to figure this out um, because Godot 4 is a lot different. Um, but it was fun. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. Um, Hopefully you understand the process of how, how do we figure this out? How, like, how would I figure this out before the tutorial? I would go to tile map, open documentation and, and read through it. So especially for Godot 4, this might actually be important because a lot of things have, are changing in Godot 4. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, subscribe, comment, like, share. Um, consider pledging to my Patreon um, or joining my Discord. Um, commenting down below will also help a ton. Um, and that's it. So I'll see you guys next time.